Uh, well, now there's the one other aspect, I think, to uh, anyone's job as a, a director of clinical services or a director of a department, and that is you've got to cope with the administration and of course that snowballed in recent years and mushroomed beyond recognition. In the early days of Queen Mary's Karshofen there was one senior physician who was actually my boss, the pediatrician, there was one senior nurse who was the matron in charge and there was one hospital secretary who did all the uh, rest of the work and that's it and the hospital ran very efficiently and then they had a board of governors who were mainly retired generals and some from the war who knew how to discipline things and um, it seemed to work very well. Now of course you have a whole hierarchy of different levels and one of the joys of being head of a department in a hospital is that you meet up with your administrative chief every week and we go through all the things that need doing and he makes some very nice notes in his leather bound uh, book that he had for the days of computers and lap and uh, iPhones and things and then you'd meet again the following week and you go through exactly the same and nothing had been done and uh, it was uh, quite an interesting sort of experience and then uh, just comes back to mind every year at Christmas the administrators used to lay on a sort of uh, uh, lunch and get together uh, in the nurses home area and you then met all the administrative staff and so I always used to make sure that I uh, put it in my diary and popped in and I met this particular uh, administrator over lunch and uh, before long he was complaining to me that uh, the doctors weren't putting their weight and he was really very really disappointed with the doctors and um, so I said well tell me uh, what's, uh, what's the hang up? He said well the problem is they're working too hard. He said, we've tried to save money, we've closed theatres, we've closed wards and so on and we're still not reducing the number of patients and we've got to make some savings and uh, the doctors are not playing ball. So I said, well you've got it absolutely wrong. Uh, I won't mention his name. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I. I mean, uh, the, the way to get around this is quite simple. You've tackled it from the wrong end. I mean, what you've got to do, actually, is to get rid of all the doctors, then you get rid of all the nurses, then you'll save a tremendous amount of money, and you won't have any patients, and you'll save even more money, and then you'll achieve your aims. And he looked at me, and he said, goodness, yes, that's a good idea. Uh, so, is there any service we don't need? So I said, yes, of course, uh, I'm sure there are many services you don't need. He said, for instance, do we need orthopedics? I mean, that's not an academic subject here yeah, in a postgraduate school. He said, no, you don't need orthopedics. But I said, but uh, do you think I should continue with my muscle clinic? He said, oh, yes, that's all right. So I said, and what if these children need rehabilitating with calipers to get them walking? And we need the orthopedic people just to do the anatomy of the ankle which they now routinely do for us. I said, oh, well, that is a problem. Yeah, okay. Anyway, but uh, it gave me some idea of the sort of mindset of <laughs> administrators and I don't think things have changed really very much over the years, perhaps just a little more of it.